Hello again, Gary Stearman. It's a pleasure to be back with you to spend a few minutes talking about Prophecy Watchers. Alongside me, Bob Ulrich, and uh, we're going to give you an update about what we've been doing, about the progress of our new ministry, and we're going to talk a little bit about contemporary Bible prophecy. But first, I'm going to turn it over to Bob and let him tell you some of the exciting things that have been happening right here at Prophecy Watchers. Bob? You mean other than the second blood moon last night? <laughs> other than that. And by the way, in a moment, I'm going to talk about I that. I know you are. You know, we've had a lot of really, really um, positive things happen to us in just three weeks. It's hard to believe we launched the Prophecy Watchers just three short weeks ago. It seems like an eternity ago. Uh, I have been busy, diligently working day and night, uh, seemingly 24 hours a day, working on a new bookstore, uh, working on a new website, working and planning a future prophecy conference. Uh, my plate is extremely full. But I'd like to just say one thing. It's really, really good to have friends. Uh, Gary and I are just overwhelmingly thankful for the people out there who have come to our aid and who are really helping us launch this ministry from the ground up. Uh, we've had a series of miracles take place in the last three weeks that are, are just mind-blowing to us. We had no, no idea that there'd be this much interest, there'd be this much of a following. Gary, people are Googling your name and they are finding us by the thousands. That's true, Bob. It really is. And in fact, we've really been surprised, delightfully surprised, that, that you've found us and, and that you're interested in what we're doing. And we're very much interested in uh, developing a ministry that will serve your needs because we feel there's a very, very strong need today to continue the message of dispensational pre-trib, pre-mill Bible prophecy from a foundational standpoint, that is to say backed up by scripture, not wild speculation, but simply observations made through the perspective given uh, in the Holy Scriptures. And that's what we're really, really eager to do. That's what we're working toward, Bob. Well, there's a hunger out there. There's no question. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys what's going on in the news. We're watching Ebola. We're watching the blood moons. We're watching Israel. We're watching chaos occur all over the world. People have questions. Gary Stearman has answers, and let me just say loudly and clearly, this is the theologian here. I'm the business manager, for lack of a better word. There's going to come a time in the near future where you're going to see Gary back in the saddle doing regular updates, maybe not on a daily basis, but on quite a regular basis here on the set. Uh, there's a point coming very quickly now where we're going to be back on television. Uh, we're in the process of setting up cameras, uh, acquiring studio time, uh, dealing with video editing, uh, computers, equipment, things that we need to put things together. It's not an overnight task. It's not an easy task. No, it's, it's, not. it's an awful lot to pull together from literally scratch three weeks ago. Can you believe that in three weeks' time we have had 3,700 people sign up for an email newsletter that we're just learning how to mail and actually how to send for the first time? Bob, there's something else you need to talk about, and that's the website. Of course, we have prophecywatchers.com, but that's just the bare beginning. We're working on a website that's going to be absolutely amazing, right? Well, people think that the website we have now is our website. That's just something called a launch page in the, uh, in the webmasters community. We have a full-blown website that's coming very, very soon. Uh, it's almost finished, actually. We're in the proofing stage. The final pieces of the puzzle are coming together. This is the top secret project that I've been working on here for the last few weeks. And with the website will come the bookstore. It'll come a lot to a lot of links to a lot of things that Gary writes. Uh, everything you can imagine that this website could possibly be, you're going to find it at prophecywatchers.com. We're very far down the road with it. Let's, let me address a contemporary issue and talk about Bible prophecy, which is what I love to do more than anything else. Uh, I've got a letter here from Bill. Bill, thanks for your correspondence. We do read your mail. We read your Facebook comments. We're very attentive to what people are saying to us. Bill wrote to me and said there seems to be much uh, being made about the so-called blood moons and some misunderstanding about the imminency of the rapture. And, and then he goes on to ask a question. He wants me to, to weigh in on the question of whether the, the blood moon phenomenon is really worth watching and does it take place before the rapture? 
or does it take place after the tribulation? And what he's saying to me is, uh, in Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And then he also refers to Matthew. Uh, Matthew uh, 24 in the Olivet Discourse, verse 29, which says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And, and so Bill is a bit confused and he says, well, is it before the tribulation or is it after the tribulation? Bill, it's both before and after, and that's the value of studying prophecy because Joel talks about a blood moon before the tribulation, very clearly and plainly. Jesus and the book of Revelation, by the way, <clears throat> speak of a series of darkenings of the sun and the moon during the tribulation and after the tribulation. So there's more than one astronomical phenomenon, which is why you have to study the whole counsel of God. You can't just rely on one verse or one book of the Bible. You have to put them together. And let me tell you for sure that this blood moon phenomenon, and Bob, I really believe this, I think it's worth watching because you have uh, four uh, lunar eclipses. The last one was just yesterday. And those four lunar eclipses occur on Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot, the Jewish calendar. And right in the middle of the four is a total solar eclipse visible in Jerusalem, March 20th, 2015. Now, are we attaching anything phenomenal to that? No, we're not saying that any particular thing will happen. But on the other hand, Joel talks about it. Something like this happening before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So, Bob, why should we not be interested in it? Well, I set up a, a Sam's Club account last night uh, here in Oklahoma City. And uh, when, the, uh, when the man behind the counter saw the name of the ministry on the account, Prophecy Watchers, Inc., he looked at me kind of funny and he said, so what do you think about the blood moons? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, well... You're talking my language, let me tell you. And so we had an animated conversation about it. And of course, not everybody thinks there's anything to it. Some people think it's just a bunch of screwballs running around, you know, making predictions. Of course, we're not making any predictions. We think it is significant. It's something observable and curious. And for it to be structured this way, to me, it could certainly be a sign from the Lord that uh, we're living in the last days, of course, we already know we're living in the last days. Absolutely. And by the way, uh, I can't wait to give you my latest study on the mentions of the last days in the Bible. There are six mentions of the last days in the Old Testament, two of them in the New Testament. You put all those together and it looks very much like what we're seeing today, Bob. And what are we seeing today? We're seeing a growing caliphate in the Middle East. We're seeing the European community turning against Israel, withdrawing support. We're seeing the United States withdrawing support from Israel. We're seeing the Palestinians firing 4,000 rockets into Israel. And the United Nations says nothing. It's like it's, it's no problem if, if, if the Palestinian state uh, shoots 4,000 rockets into Israel. That's just to be expected or something. Well, Bob, the Bible talks about a situation very similar to that in several places. Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel uh, all talk about the world turning against Israel in the latter days. And isn't that the real critical piece of the puzzle is what's actually happening in the Middle East. All the other things are just kind of background white noise where we're still watching Israel, we're watching all of these nations in the Bible align exactly like the Old Testament prophets wrote 2,700 yes. years ago. You couldn't, you couldn't lay it out any better than no, it's laid out on the pages of the Bible where we are today. And Bob and I are, well, may I say it, we're the Prophecy Watchers. And uh, we're coming to you courtesy of prophecywatchers.com. Uh, people can go to other uh, addresses as well, Bob, and learn about us. Well, we're not the only Prophecy Watchers out there. I know an awful lot of the people who are following our ministry, following Gary's teachings. And I have so many letters from, from so many people. I want to read one real quick here for you because it just I think this kind of sums up where things are going. Gary and Bob, so glad to hear you'll be back on TV. What you do is unlike any prophecy program I've ever seen. I know a bit about the subject. Spent some time with Jim Combs, Zola Levitt, met Tim LaHaye, Tommy Ice, and a few others. But the speakers you get and the subjects you address are life-changing. 
And to me, you know, all the people you're used to seeing on television with Gary, Tom Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Koenig, Avi Lipkin, Mark Biltz, Jonathan Kahn, all these guys that have developed an audience over the years through our television program are going to be part of what we're doing in the future. If you can just be patient just a little bit longer, we're going to get there. We're going to be back on TV. If I didn't stop Bob, he'd talk for another 30 minutes, and we're out of time. So I've got to stop him, but, but, I, but I want to say this. Thanks for watching us at prophecywatchers.com. You can also see us at facebook.com forward slash watch Gary. And uh, by the way, we're going to be delivering our message uh, more and more regularly in the days to come. Don't forget... Time Travelers of the Bible, we're going to send this to you for free with any donation to help us launch this ministry. And that's, by the way, something that we love to do. We want to give you something, and we know that, that you're there for us. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your prayers and your blessings. For Bob Ulrich, I'm Gary Stearman saying, keep watching, everybody. <laughs>